The East India Company began as a commercial enterprise. It was set up by a bunch of traders, um, but it found itself in the peculiar position that it was able to exploit divisions inside India, particularly in Bengal, and by exploiting divisions within the ruling elites, from be being a trading company, it very rapidly became a ruling company and de facto the ruler of Bengal by playing off different interests in the country against each other. So it's a very unique example of how economic power gets converted into political power and state power. But the East India Company was one of the rare examples um, of a multinational company becoming politically in control of a entire country which was much bigger even than the home country from which the East India Company came. This is unusual, but I think what the general legacy that you can take from this history is that if a country is internally divided and if its elites are fighting each other, then foreign companies and foreign trading interests posing as the um, purveyors of free markets and enterprise can actually do massive political damage and put the country in a permanent situation of unequal um, relationships. And to some extent, that has not gone in Bangladesh today. Bangladesh today, once again, is a country with lots of political fights between the elites. And we shouldn't be surprised if, not exactly in the same form because history never repeats itself, but we shouldn't be surprised if in international or foreign economic interests take advantage of this. I think this is the main lesson, the main legacy um, of the East India Company, and we would do well not to forget it. Learning about the East India Company and how it moved from a trading company into a, a, a ruling entity, into the ruling class, and eventually the colonial power, is very important for countries like Bangladesh, because that part of uh, the history is not over yet. Till the country becomes, till a country becomes self-confidently developed with many powerful interests within itself and a broad base of manufacturing and agriculture and services which are globally competitive, its elites are weak and its elites are fighting each other and they are always prey to the lure and the um, influence of foreign powers who can play divide and rule games. And so the East India Company was the first massive divide and rule game that was played in the Indian subcontinent with consequences which lasted for a couple of centuries. I think that lesson is very important for um, young people in India, in Bangladesh and in the developing world to understand. Not because it will happen in exactly the same way again, but because similar things are happening right now and internal divisions are the source of national weakness and of exploitation by outsiders. Colonialism takes a different form. Colonialism no longer works with guns and arms, doesn't come in and conquer countries, but unequal exchange in the form of countries getting bad trading deals, countries giving up much more than they should, getting very unequal um, partnerships with other countries is very common. And nowadays, it doesn't even have to be between a developing country and a developed country, a slightly more developed country can give a very unequal relationship to a slightly less developed country. This is very much a problem in our region, in Bangladesh, in our relationships with India, with Myanmar, with China, with others. Bangladesh has to be very careful not to allow internal divisions, to allow foreign companies and foreign interests to give the country bad deals. And I think that lesson of the East India Company hasn't gone over. Well, I think that the project that uh, Ahmadullah has of um, getting young people to write fictional stories about that, those events is a, is a very important tool. But I think also learning the history accurately is very important. The history is very nuanced. And I think it's very important for people to understand that simplifying this history into good guys and bad guys, into the betrayal of Mir Jafar and the heroism of Siraj Dola. These are very simplified stories. The reality was very complex. The reality was one of divisions between the elites of different groups thinking that making an alliance with a trading company would be to their interest. When people make mistakes like that of making a deal which turns out to be bad for the country, it's usually not a deliberate act 
of betrayal or a deliberate act of um, selling out the country. The people who were doing this thought they were doing it in the best interests of their community, of their interests. It turned out to be a dramatically bad decision. And I think that lesson that well-meaning compromises and well-meaning alliances can turn out to be very destructive for your national interest is a much more important lesson for us to understand and for young people to take back with them. So I think a, a number of different methods have to be used. Story writing is one, but also a nuanced understanding of history is another one. Having critical history um, readings is, an, is another. And that, by the way, is not just about the East India Company. It's about all aspects of history. It's about the history of Bangladesh. It's the history of this country, of, the, of England. We need to take different aspects of history and look at the same story from multiple perspectives. And that's how we in, enrich our understanding of history. And I think that's our job as professors and teachers. We always encourage our students to take a very critical position on every aspect of economics, history, politics, look at things from multiple perspectives, have debates, and then you see that actually reality is very complex, that is real, history is not about good guys and bad guys, but about good decisions and bad decisions. That sometimes the players misunderstood the structure of interests and took a decision which ended up harming everybody, including themselves. So Mir Jafar himself got finished off by the bad decisions he made. That's the real tragedy, or, or if you like, the lesson of history, that we all need to understand these structural issues, the, the global competitive structures, power structures much better, and you understand that much better by being critical, by not taking one story, not taking one position, but looking at the thing from many different perspectives and then improving your understanding so you don't make bad decisions again, you don't make mistakes again. Well, my history with the, with the Brick Lane Circle has been over many years. I've given seminars and lectures and, and, and discussions and so on with Ahmadullah, with others in, in the Brick Lane Circle. So I have a long history of um, participation in, in the community through the Brick Lane Circle. And I found that a very interesting and exciting experience because there are many young people in the Bangladeshi community in the, in the East End of London who are really hungry for ideas and, and new ways of thinking. And this is one enterprise which gives them that, which gives them a forum for having debates and discussions and arguments and taking different positions. And, and that's how actually our understanding of each other and of the broader community we live in, the English and British society we live in, that improves through this process of debate and, and discussion.